TV. Good afternoon, Gossip Talk Shows family. It's Numsa here at Gossip Talk Shows. Uh, find your own voice, the lead from within with me today. Uh, I've got Nick Motishka and Amanda Murray. And today we are talking about all about the AI. Amanda, would you like to explain, please? Because Grant is not here. I think Grant will be joining us in a few minutes, but um, he just was at a conference on AI and his this was his inspiration for this topic. But um, AI has so much potential, but also it gives me a little bit of fear at the same time. And so this is a very interesting topic. Um, the two AIs that I've had some experience with is chat GTP and then also Midjourney. Um, my friend is actually learning how to do some illustrations with Midjourney and they've actually like, they're like, I'm obsessed. He's just like been playing with it and playing with it. And it like, it's absolutely amazing what it comes up with, but it's really like specific things that you have to do. And it's such a learning curve, um, but it is, we're looking, exploring the potential of it to use for illustrations in, in books and in different things. And so it's really like opening a new frontier for people, but at the same time is kind of scary. Like it's saved me a lot of time, just like with giving me some ideas and even like I'm building a course on how to self-publish on Amazon. And so I'll like type in like the importance of metadata for keywords research um, on K Kindle Direct Publishing. And even in chat DP, it'll like GTP, it will show me a whole like thing. And then I just go through and I read it and like 99% of it is almost exactly what I would sit there and write. I just go in and I tweak it because some of it is not as specific as I want to be. So it was like keywords for this. And it only gave you like basic keywords, but really if you are doing proper metadata research in your Kindle direct publishing, you don't want really basic general keywords. And so then I went in and I changed those saying like, you need to actually do a lot of research on your metadata keywords. And so it has saved me a lot of time in and made some things better. And what I've been doing, even with writing book descriptions, is I'll use chat TP, GTP to help me write a book description. And then I'll look at the Amazon bestsellers. And then I'll take a look at a bunch of different sources. And then I'll like have all three of them set out beside me. And then I'll write mine so that I have a bunch of ideas just to model off of. And I think that's really helpful as a writer and as somebody who is like really interested in exploring um, the potential that technology has for us, because I actually have a master's in education and technology. Everything I learned in that degree <laughs> is completely obsolete, though, because it was like five years ago or no, probably about nine years ago that I finished it. And so, yeah, everything that I learned at that point in time is completely completely gone. None of, none of it even exists really anymore. <laughs> even the like um, building a website, which is one of the things that I had to do in it, all of that has changed now. And so uh, Nick, I'm really curious how, how, um, this new AI technology is impacting you as somebody who is launching a new business. What are you using it for? Or have you explored it at all? Yeah, I have a little bit and the, and again, chat GPT for me, I believe it's GPT. I'm not sure. Um, and kind of exactly how you described just to get sort of ideas and different things rolling basically. Um, but I'm, I'm curious what, you guys think about does it matter that it's written by in artificial intelligence or by a human or does it matter that an illustration is done by a machine versus a human like what are the I guess implications of of that in in your mind and then what are the well I'm sure we'll talk about a lot of those implications but the human cost on basically making certain jobs obsolete and what are we going to do with all those people? And what are some of the potential negatives if this is used in harmful ways rather than positive ways? And so I, I agree with you that there is a lot of there's a lot of positive potential, absolutely. And Grant described it as something that if you're not going to get on board with it, you're going to get left behind. And so I, I I'm kind of on the on the fence with it, and I. 
I understand that it's going to, it's going to be important and it's going to be really useful, but at the same time, I, I do have some, some reservations and some, some questions and I, uh, I'm, well, I guess we'll find out, but very curious as to how, how this all turns out for us. So uh, I will let you guys go from here. Uh, make a comment. I do not trust <laughs> the IA. When it comes to writing books and everything, yes, you can. But when it comes to maths, I, I, I just tested it the other day when I put in the in the group and say, guys, I'm struggling with this answer. Could you please give me the right answer? What was your right answer? So I tested it with like a hundred answers that I was doing maths for my university and written my own answers. But asking it to give me answers, it was giving me the wrong answers for maths. But with English, writing is good, but with maths, no. So I don't feel threat. I just feel I feel that although we are scared, although we feel that it's going to take over everything, you can't take off a human's touch. It's like, you know, I was like working out my meds and then I, I'll ask chat GTP, can you give me the answer to make sure that I have the right answer? Give me the wrong answer. And uh, in the end, I was like, this thing is not really 100%, is it? So it made me realize actually, but if I go and say, write me a book, it will write it, but it's not the same. Like you can you can see that it's not written by human, but then you have to go to another software and rewrite it to, to look like human, but it's not. But for me, for those reasons, I don't feel threat. And I just, I feel that it's taking, it, it's gonna help with so many companies with save the money but there's always going to, if people lose jobs, there's always going to be something for them. Because what I realized with meds, like university, and I was like, this thing is not, and my daughter was like, mommy, just stop winding it, chat GTP. I was like, no, I'm not winding it up. I'm, I, I Honestly, I ask every answer. The easy ones it was giving me the right ones, the right answers, but the Hard ones where you have to work, you have to do this, you have to do that. No, it, it couldn't give me the right answers. So for those reasons, I feel no threat. I feel that is there to help us somehow, somehow to take the burden out of our shoulders. But there's still a room for us to develop. There's still a room naked. Don't feel threatened. We, 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 we still, there's a room for us there. That's how I feel. What do you think, Grant? <laughs> Well, thank you, Nomsa. So, you know, when I suggested this this this, this topic, really, it was, um, yeah, it's a huge thing. Huge. I mean, AI has actually been with us one way or another since around 1985, the humble origins of it. Um, computers have evolved. Um, you know, it started off with, with mechanical computers in China. Then um, Alan Turing and, and Babbage started making computers and then after they made you know the the, the enigma code etc and oh, they they broke the enigma code which was astronomical with computers they then asked the question is a computer an intelligent thing no no it wasn't it was functional hence the expression garbage in garbage out so it would only do what you put in but since then it's changed and ai is a learning machine and it will grow and learn more. You mentioned the example in terms of mathematics. Yeah, that's right, at the moment. But what was impossible with AI three months ago is doable now. What's impossible now will be easy in nine months' time. It's, it will change beyond all record. It's like, it's like, um, it's like astral projection. Um, in rocket science, you'll get a thing which is not possible now. It will take this long to become possible there. But at this point, they will then learn how to get to this point. Uh, at this point, this point. So there's people born now who can potentially live to about 130. That would not have been possible in our time. But this is astral projection. This has functioned into things such as lifetime pensions of firemen and things like this because health and safety has got better. Breathing apparatus got better. Firemen are living much longer than they ever did 
therefore the pension pot was got smaller. So this is like they used astral projection for that, astral projection. And in the same token, this is what's happening with AI. It's changing beyond recognition because it learns. It's effectively a machine that's read every book, <laughs> if you look at it that way. So I was playing around with it. And this is the thing. You've got to know, learn how to use AI because, of course, it has certain protocols which comes up against barriers. If you learn how to operate that and how to ask the right questions, and that would be a prompt engineer. And a prompt engineer in the US right now is the highest paid profession. Right. Yeah, no kidding. So they can learn how to get around the protocols of the machine legally, and they can use it. Now, the real learning is when the machine learning or an AI machine is used with another AI machine. That's when, because I can see the pitfalls around this. It's going to, it's going to, Cost of apparently 88 million jobs are going to go. According to the figures, and I can't quantify these figures, apparently it's going to create 97 million jobs, which sounds good on face value. But as I said earlier, I feel this is like saying to everyone, hey, everybody, you know, cut price nuclear weapons, everyone can buy them, but please use them responsibly. I would but I can't speak on behalf of other people. And my fear is when we look back at history, us human beings do a great job of screwing things up. You know, um, artificial intelligence grows. Unfortunately, this hasn't changed for millions of years and it's not looking at changing anytime soon. So I, I believe the secret, and you alluded to it just now, Anomza, <laughs> was about, and it's why I said it was artificial intelligence. If we can match this with emotional intelligence, with human intelligence, you've got a fantastic combination and an opportunity to help many, many more people in the world. And that's my mission anyway. So it lights up my eyes, but it also fills me with terror because look at emails. Emails were supposed to save hours and hours of sending letters so that we could save that time and spend more time looking, looking after our loved ones and being with them. Did we do that? No, we just sent more emails and came up as busy as possible because we wanted to make more money than the person next to us. So we're just as busy as we ever were. <laughs> so we, we don't have a habit of using things intelligently. Um, SMS, text messages, came from the military, as we know. It was short messages. It wasn't meant to be grammatically correct. There's its own language for it. It's meant to be the clues of the disaster. Short message. Do we do that? No, we said long messages and things like this. So we have a, a habit of misusing things. The ethics is going to be huge. And where the protocols aren't in place, I don't want to say too much here now, but the potential for blackmail is enormous because the fraudulent aspect of it is huge. What would have been impossible? Well, no, what would have been unlikely with fraudulent blackmail about a year ago is very, very doable now by almost anyone. Um, and also when it comes to breaching copyright, it's still illegal, but the way to do it, and, and people may not even challenge it, is astronomically at this moment in time. I believe protocols are going to place to stop it, to tighten it, but then you'll have a cat and mouse situation where the wrongdoers will get get under the radar, then security will be put in place, then then they'll upgrade that, and then they'll upgrade that, and it's just like a war. It's a cat and mouse. So that will bring about a whole new wave of crime, a whole new wave of of legitimate uh, wealth and legitimate poverty as well. I think. But the key thing is, I think if anyone's listening. I would not run away from it. I would embrace it because you don't want to be one of those 88 million who lose your job and not one of 97 million of the jobs that are created. You're going to need to pivot. Sitting there folding your arms and saying, I'm not having anything to do with it, I think would be a very foolish action right now. It's changing. I'm not a technologically advanced person at all. Um, and if my Achilles heel has been technology over the years. Uh, I can't afford to let AI become my Achilles heel. 
because I think it could have a really devastating effect. So I would, I would suggest staying on top of it, but use it ethically. That's what I, that's what I think. But again, this is moving on a daily basis. And um, one way or another, whether we know it or not, whether we like it or not, I bet all of us have been interacted with by AI at least once already today. Amanda, what's, what what are you what are you thinking? I can see you've got some Talking like before you came on about how like I'm excited for it, but also have fears around it. And you touched on a lot of my fears, especially as an educator, as a teacher. I look at what kids are already doing in the classroom and learning how to write and learning how to think for themselves and learning how to critically think. That's the piece that I really worry about is that critical thinking piece might get lost. And if you are using AI to write, are you looking at multiple sources? So are you actually searching and getting your information to make an unbiased assumption about something? And so I saw something on um, social media on somebody that I follow, and they were talking about how AI is actually terrifying them because of the fact that they searched in, they put into chat GPT, um, tell me about Donald Trump. And then they typed in, tell me about Joe Biden. And it was completely biased, <laughs> completely biased what it came up with. And he said, that's terrifying me because if people don't have critical thinking skills, then they're going to just believe what it spits out and not actually do the research themselves. And on either end, we know that biases are we want to get like into the middle where we can look at both sides and probably like make an educated decision for ourselves <laughs> that's how I always try to look at things and I know when I was in university this is one thing that I really really aspire to is because I was doing research on ADHD and I was looked at a whole bunch of research from a whole bunch of different um, researchers and it really what the results were on the research depended on who was funding the research. And so I could find out information that, yes, all of this medication works wonderfully for all of these people. And then I could find research based on like, no, these natural options will actually really help. And so, but then when I looked at who was funding the research, that really told me what the results of the study were going to tell me more than even reading the study. And so that made me really start to think, and even in the classroom, educating people for over 16 years, I look at it now as each family has to make their own decisions on their kids' attention as things. They may choose medicate the medication path, or they may choose a more natural path. It is what works best for that family. Every kid is different. Every kid's going to need a different route. There's not one pill that fixes all. There's not one natural option that fixes all. You have to look at the human as a whole. And so that's something that, that I worry about with the AI is that we're not looking at the human as a whole. We're just being like, oh, this is a quick, quick pop your pill and it, this everything's fixed. Look. <laughs> <laughs> and and we're missing those critical thinking skills. We're missing looking at the situation from a whole because we just want a quick fix right now. And so that is the part that makes me fearful of it. But I also was saying just before how I've been using it to help me write book descriptions um, about my books. I'll be like, give me a book book description on book a children's book about empathy, and it'll give me some really great ideas to go off of. And so I'm going back into the books that I wrote even five years ago, and I'm upgrading their descriptions on Amazon because ChatGTP is giving me some really great ideas to make my descriptions better. Am I going to use just copy and paste the whole thing? Absolutely not. <laughs> but I'm going to be like, huh, I didn't think of writing it like this. I might use some of those ideas. And so I think that's when we're actually using it responsibly. <laughs> and I think that's the part that we really need to instill into the next generation is how can we use this responsibly and how can we use it with critical thinking skills? What are your thoughts, Nick? Yeah, I think those are all really good points and good things to think about. And I just, I wonder about the, I guess the, implications I kind of alluded to it before but like does it 
does it matter to you guys that it was written by a machine versus written by a human or like an illustration again does it matter that it was done by a machine or a human like does it lessen its artistic value and i my own opinion would be it it does in a way like yeah a painting like the one behind you amanda like it, that means a lot more having been done by a human who sat there and you know created something versus someone that just typed in you know whatever the description was and it just popped out this thing that looks amazing I have something like, hilarious to tell you about the painting behind me was it <laughs> this actually originally was an ikea frame that the school was going to throw out and it was like the textbook like bridge painting that like every dog in their like person and their dog had in their house a couple of years ago and they were going to throw it out at the school and I said what's it what are you doing with that and they're like throwing it in the garbage and I'm like no you're not and I took it and I painted over it <laughs> so it actually was basically an AI painting <laughs> and I turned it into something else and if you actually like feel it it's textured there's like hot glue on it so it's actually like a 3D painting <laughs> but yeah there's that human piece to like this painting and I bet you if it was the bridge painting from Ikea <laughs> you would be like what's in her house there's a classic <laughs> example right there I mean all jokes aside there's a classic example you took something which was computer generated or AI generated and you put yeah. a human touch on it yeah and so then we had another one in the school like I found another one a couple like just this year and I was like what are you doing with that <laughs> <laughs> And so we painted, we've actually made a whole school wide painting on it where every kid has a puzzle piece on the tree. Um, and I painted a tree in the center and I painted over the Ikea painting. What do you have a school now? Oh, in, in our school office. Pardon? Do you, you have a school now with no paintings in it because they're all hanging in your walls at your home? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's actually in the school. It's in the office now. I took the took the frame and and we painted a tree on it and then every kid painted a puzzle piece and and the, they're the leaves and so it actually turned out absolutely beautiful but yeah. this ikea framing that was somewhere in the school i don't know where i don't even think it was ever put up just was laying around and now it's actually being displayed because it is kids artwork and then it makes it valuable whereas before it was just like laying in a storage room and there's uh, that's the point I want to pick up on because yeah I mean that that's it you've taken something that I say was computer generated or AI generated even and you have embellished it now it, AI can do amazing things with art now with, with artists what they can do they can generate things in that style of and that you know when you look at the true essence of what art is because Nick was asking does it matter you can sell anything on its benefits. You can sell an argument for, yeah, that really matters. It's not made by a human. You can make a you can make an arg argument and say, this is the new form of art. Because this has come from humans. You know, humans, it, AI is only a learning machine. It's only what's been put in it from humans. As I would say, who programs the AI machines? Humans. Right. Humans have done that. So it is generated by human. That could be a whole new art form in its own argue that it's not and yes you could argue that it's not you could make an argument for it you can make an argument against it and i was thinking about this a lot recently what's going to happen and there's a prediction i'll make this is the second time i've made this on here is that there'll be there'll be a swing a mood there'll be a trend swing first of all i think we'll all go at ai mad and we'll forget about humans for a bit we'll go ai mad <clears throat> Then after a while, we go, yeah, yeah, kind of, I kind of, yeah, okay, it is. And you'll settle down. And of course, the true essence of it, I think, is exactly what a man's doing. You take the idea, because it can bring some brilliant ideas, and then you go, yeah, it's not cool, because it's only learning your style. It will learn Amanda's style, and that will get better as more information about Amanda gets loaded up on the internet. But at the moment, it's working with the best info it's got. So you will take it, you will embellish it and put your, your refinements on it. And it would be unique because you put your refinements on it. That will lessen over time because it will get to know you almost as well as you know yourself. My thoughts is, how do you 
then stop yourself from being replicated. What stops me from saying, well, I'll just make a school lesson in the style of Amanda. And it gives me the same answers that it would give you. Right? <laughs> Where's that stop me from doing things that I shouldn't with that, selling that, right? I think the true value then is going to swing back to the power of a human. It's then we'll say, you want some information that you can't find on an AI machine? I've just created this. This has not left my head. This is not on any document anywhere. If you want to learn from me, you come to my special retreat, my special workshop, my special conference, limited numbers, and the price will be high. And it will be human. And this can't be found anywhere else. And I think it will swing back the other. It will go through a trend, as it always does. History repeats itself. And that's what I think will happen. Uh, but there will be tragedies and there will be few successes. But I think we really need to keep an open mind, embrace it, and keep a really strong ethic check in place. But I think it's brilliant. I love the story that Amanda said. Um, and I think you're, you're really heading in the right direction already. What are you thinking, Thompson? Because you've got some great views on these things. Thinking it. Uh... It, but you can't write the information that has never been written. It can only it can only write the information that it has been written. But I think we we shouldn't fear. For me, if I'm writing a book, if somebody says I've written a book, I would love to write it because you can tell the with the emotions, you can tell anything that has been written by IA and uh, that has been written by human. I've tried to, to actually read the when I say write a book. To me, it keeps repeating the same thing over and over and over. It does not make sense. So that's why I feel that we shouldn't feel threatened by it. We should feel that it's going to help us maybe with time. Because there are some things that, like Amanda is saying, how long does it normally take you, Amanda, to write a, a like a description, like a book description, it takes a long time. And so if it takes a long time, are you guys going? Uh, Nick had to go because it's the, the, the time change. <laughs> okay. We're still on the time change where you guys haven't had a time change yet. So I have to go in, a, in about 15 minutes too. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it, 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 I think it somehow, somehow it is gonna help us. We need to take advantage of it, and not to feel fear. Uh, just write it, like Amanda. If you say you're writing a description, a book, this title, it takes a long time to research and find a title. But if he can find you a title within a second, why not use it? And then just tweak it the way you want because you wouldn't put it exactly the same. But for me, I'll say if anyone is watching, just take advantage of it for business, take advantage, but don't become lazy and wanting it to use to do the work for you because it's just there to assist, to assist with everything. And uh, that's why I was saying with my meds, I realized that it's not actually smart as we are fearing. So I think we just have to trust that is here for a reason uh, and just take advantage of not stay behind because there are some people that are going to stay behind. The competitors, they're not going to stay there. They're just going to use it and to make sure even when you're writing a, a blog, Amanda, I'm sure it, it titles, it gives you the number one a, a, a thing that ranks number one on Google. So I think you just have to take advantage of it. And there are ways the uh, people have been making lots of videos on YouTube how to use it properly. And uh, I find it that that it, that information is also useful to just combine it and just use it. I've not used it much. Uh, or, or I use it on a what is what is it called uh, on a, on a, on YouTube when I'm looking for topics. Uh, it takes me time because V I uh, V I Q. What is it called? The let me find it. It helps with the topic. So they are now using it on YouTube. So I go there and I look at the topic. It does help. It helps me 
with time as well, because when he gives me topic, I have to go on YouTube and just check if that topic really exists, and then I write it how I want it to write. So I think we just have to know that is here to stay. And the more it stays, the more it's going to develop, the more and this is a smart thing. So the more it's going to get smart, the more I talk to it and I ask it questions. And it's like, I can't think like a woman, but a, a human being, but I can do this, those I can do. I talk to it just to find out how it works, how I can talk, how I can communicate with it so I can use it for my business. So anyone that is watching, I'll say, don't be scared, don't fear, use it to actually, it's like Amanda, when you say you go on, on, on Amazon and change your titles, it does help when you change the titles because it gives you the titles that actually people are searching for more and more and more. And that is, if something is making you money, why not use it? Just get on with it. Just use it without fear. As long as you're going to make it, write it and we still connect with the books, why not? Over to you, Amanda. Okay, I'm really curious in the, because you decided on this topic after being, running a conference. What is it that they were talking about with the ethics versus like the advantages and, and what are your feelings on that? Because I know when I look in, in the school system, I see like lots of, of benefits and lots of fears. And I know like anytime that, that kids, because I, I teach the highest grade I've taught is grade six and they will if they plagiarize I know automatically that they've been plagiarizing because I'm like you don't even know what that word means <laughs> like you can't put it in this is not how you write in your notebook I know it's been plagiarized right like copy and teaching them that copying and pasting is not actually doing your work you have to put it into your own words and that's so hard for kids especially in grade five to like put read a paragraph and then like let's try to put that into our own words and that's something that I'm constantly working on is like okay how can we summarize what we just read so that we can explain our understanding of it and I think that's a skill that's going to need to even be fostered even more as we move forward because that putting it into our own words and thinking for ourselves is something that I worry about with the AI stuff. I think you're, you're right Amanda and and the ironic thing is, the oxymoron of it all is, that the more it becomes technologically advanced, the more our personal skills are going to be a differentiator, the thing that's really going to add our personal value. So although it's sent there to negate that, in fact, it's going to, it's going to multiply the need for that, to stand out from the crowd. Because here's the thing, the, the, the barrier to entry to markets now is going to become in many industries, I can't speak for all, is going to become so much lower because of AI. Things I can think of that took three, four years, people would be able to learn in three or four months, very realistically. So you can flood a market. And when there's a recession, there's always a flood in certain markets and industries. I've noticed it. People become experts. They're not experts, but they, they call themselves experts within a very short space of time. And the market gets flooded, which is confusing for the consumer because they don't, at a glance, know who really is the professional or who's just got some great marketing. Okay. Um, or advertising, maybe, should I say, to be more accurate. Um, however, however the, the, the point of this being that the further you go into it, your real value, your real experience, your, your real knowledge, your real personality, is going to be the thing that people are going to, they're going to get their fingers burnt. And after a while, they're going to want the real thing. And that's where your collateral, your value goes up enormously. For those who choose to recognize it, get the right mindset to understand their value, to accept the change, embrace the change and grow with it. As I said, they've got to pivot. You've got to be willing to change shape. Those who are going to dig the hills in Starsdale, I think they're going to have a very rocky ride, and I hate to see it. But if they keep the essence of what they are, but adapt it to a new terrain, I think they will absolutely excel. Absolutely excel. So it's going to be about your personal skills, because the other stuff, we could all get. 
Yeah, that's it. Yeah, those interpersonal skills are, are something that's really lacking in lots of people as well. And that's something that is more hard to teach than the academics. And so that's something that I always think of too when I when I look at kids. And like I have some kids that are brilliant at math and yet have no social skills whatsoever. And I worry about those kids more than the kids that have struggle with reading but have lots of friends because those interpersonal skills are so, so important in your ability to be part of the community and to interact with others and to show caring, compassion, and kindness. And so I, I like what you said about those, those interpersonal skills being, being something that, that will help people flourish. And I think that's something that we sometimes forget about is the importance of that. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I think that's a question for all of us to ask ourselves, you know, what are our interpersonal skills? If we haven't got them, how can we acquire them? If we've got them, how can we embellish them? How can we emphasize this to people? Because uh, that's going to be the key to it. But certainly there's going to be some challenging developments with this um, and some absolutely awe-inspiring developments. When you look at it, if you use it correctly, look at the, when we went back to 3D printing, you know, there was um, remote farms that fed villages uh, that did have a tractor and the tractor broke down, which meant it couldn't harvest the stock. A 3D printer from somewhere else was rushed there with a, um, the tractor part that made the tractor work, which fed the village. You know, if used correctly, it's absolutely inspirational that these things can do. It, it really is. And it can, um, I know a remote village isn't really going to have a 3D printer. I know what you're thinking, and I agree. <laughs> and could they just not have sent a tractor part anyway? But you know, the possibilities are fine. They made a block of flats in China, a block of flats from 3D printing. You know, might be not super high, but you know, sort of like 12 apartments, something like that, in record time. It, it, it's astonishing what can be done if we use things properly. Uh, and I would like to see, you know, I'm very, I'm very interested in things that uh, advances, let's say, in understanding with, let's say, medicine, for example, that could be achieved. The field of health, you know, finance. How about using AI to understand humans? So, yeah, how could we use AI to help us to increase our human intelligence so that we could differentiate ourselves from AI? There's a thought. <laughs> how could we help it to help us to get away from the, the downside of that? Because it's non discriminant. Well, I believe it's non discriminant. Mom says, um, was it, no, it was your, your interpretation of it. it was different. It was very biased. Because, of course, it, it's only drawing from the information which is read upon. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's no, because I was like wanting it. For me, I wanted it to just work out, like just to see whether is it real. So I kept asking questions, like, oh, Laws of questions with maths. I think you got like five right, but everything else was wrong. And also, but they are good side of it. You have to, we have to look at the good side. For me, I don't want people to be negative about it because even whether we become negative about it, people, our competitors are gaining. Like he, Elon Musk is just, there's a news that just come on uh, about uh, quantum AI. That yeah. how much money is making online and apparently the banks are, are calling his uh, they were calling uh for his interview not to be aired and but it was already too late anyway so it was aired and the people were shocked at how much money he is making online so i would say just take the opportunities those who are trading if you make money make money uh from it uh there is no point in actually uh, being negative about it. There are going to be negative things about it. There are going to be positive uh, things about it. Like Grand was saying, 800 something million people are going to lose their jobs, but 900 something million people are going to gain. So be part of those uh, 900 million people who are going to gain the jobs. 
And I was looking online on LinkedIn yesterday. There's even now uh, some companies and software that want you to criticize for 100 pound an hour to criticize the AI or just to comment what do you think about it. So jobs are being created. I, I don't know whether I finished my registration because I was so curious. Some of them, it says 200 pound an hour or some of it, it says 300 or some of it 20 pound an hour. So I was like so curious just to see how it works. Uh, I'm sure there are some positive things about it. So if companies they've cre are creating, uh, like Google, they're creating uh, jobs for people to go online and just sit there and criticize the what they think about it. Like they give you a, a data for you to work with it, and then they want you to criticize it. What what was negative about it? Was positive about it? So to me, it, it does make sense. It, there are going to be things that are not going to be right about it. But with the human, uh, I've, I've, I've watched the videos, like there are a software where you can go and make videos, like YouTube videos. They don't look the same, like videos that are made, made by human. So they are, it's, it's going to, human being and AI are going to combine together to come with a good result. So for me, that's what I believe, that we are going to work with it to get the good results that we want. And businesses will be created. People will use it to come up with the a different ideas, new ideas. If somebody has already have an idea and they don't know how to go about it, this thing makes it very easy for you to actually give you some uh, advice on uh, how what to do so it, it will, i believe that there are some positive things about it and uh, grant uh what do you think because you were in this meeting you guys you, you were all day how many days was your meeting and you guys were talking about it so what do you think i was last weekend i was actually working at two conferences two conferences the same weekend so i was I was hosting one two-day conference and I was selected to be a coach on a very, very premium conference, which is a massive accolade. I was over the moon with it. Um, so I was literally coming off of one, debriefing with a team, going away, changing clothes, going on the next one, changing the background and, and doing that. And there was AI speakers on both the conferences. The same person, same person was doing the same as me, was hopping from one conference to another. And, um, and it was, I mean, when I was hosting, I said to the people, I don't use this expression lightly, but I said, my jaw is dropping on the ground. And when I talk about a game changer, this truly is a game changer. I knew about AI. I've got two colleagues who are directors of AI companies, strangely enough. Um, and even knowing them and having conversations with them, I was still staggered at what I heard last weekend. I mean, it's astronomical what it can do. Um, and how if you use one with the other and seeing the results of things and seeing live demonstrations of it from someone who and here's the key part from someone who knows how to navigate it properly that's a whole different thing and it's it it filled me with absolute excitement and terror in the same but as i say it, it, it it's like me saying hey everybody nuclear weapons for sale at the end of the street everyone can buy one you know, everyone can afford one, everyone can have one. It was like that, like, or like machine guns for sale. You know, <laughs> it was like, no, please don't, don't, please. What's going to happen? It's, um, but the, if I think of it holistically, from my personal point of view, my, my mission is to, is to take one million leaders and help them live life without limits and help them to clearly communicate their message to the world. That, that's what I really want to do. And that's what I'm, building that foundation now but this could speed it up so much more because it's about creating a ripple in the world and helping many many more people and this is totally totally a great asset asset for that by getting the voice out there quicker it's a great asset you've just got to be careful that you don't trample over over everybody in the same in the same way um and i keep emphasizing it. it's going to be the emotional intelligence the eq how you use it. Um, but here's the thing, when you look at the generation things, uh, and we've all mentioned it in this call, 
when we look at anything else that brings out a newer version or a new way, the new way is never actually, it's really better than the old way. In that it, the language can be a bit funky, especially at the beginning, because it hasn't got enough source information to work on. That will get better. It doesn't do it quite as well. But, but, but it offers many more possibilities that don't exist now. So when something's renewed, it's not necessarily better in the way it was done. The new thing often just offers more opportunities of how to use it, more of a wider range. And that's the key part. And the possibilities there for helping people are astronomical. Um, but I mean, you know, what we're talking about now is going to be obsolete within three months. You know, we said this about computers, if you remember. Oh, computers now, software in six months, and we're out of date. And it was true. This is going to be, a, it's a quantum shift, quantum shift. And I believe it is, you know, it will affect everyone a lot, first of all, that it will die down. Things always do that. But, um, you know, hold on, it's going to be a fast ride, I think. And there's going to be, I think we really have to use our emotional intelligence because we're going to see, we're going to be exposed to ideas, we're going to be challenged with our beliefs and our values. And we're going to be given a whole lot of misinformation as well as real information. And we're going to have to really use our human intelligence to not just believe what's put in front of our eyes. Because you mentioned it earlier, uh, Amanda, that people sit there and, and start using their you know, kids' AI as doing the homework and stuff like that. And you're trying to say it's using your personal skill. In the same way that it horrifies me, there's generations of people now who believe they're learning their history from Hollywood movies, which terrifies, you get it, right? that terrifies me. They're talking about this happened in this film and this movie and that, and it was terrible. These people did that to those people and that one. That's not what happened. Not what happened. That's what the Hollywood movie said. No, that's not what happened at all. But they believe yeah, well, That's why there's always that importance of looking at both sides, right? And looking at perspectives from both sides, even in a war. Like there was a really good book that I read to the kids a little while ago last year, actually. It was called Refugee. And it looked at all of these different refugees from different times throughout history. And then actually, like they, there was a way that it all came together at the end too. And it was a fictional story based on real life events. And it was like, you could see the history repeating itself throughout the different refugee stories that were told. And, and it was just absolutely amazing. And also the, like where they rejected these refugees at a certain point in time in Cuba during world war one, I, I believe. And then how later on these people from Cuba became refugees and they like, there was that like parallel. Right. Yeah, it was, un, it was amazing. Yeah. It was an amazing book. And then I read this other book called War Stories by Gordon Corman to my students um, last year. And it, it had both sides of the story from, of, and it was, it really looked at like that human piece, right? Mm -hmm. Of these young men just didn't know any better and they believed the propaganda they were told. Right how as old men they actually like were from warring sides but like had empathy and compassion and love for the other person in in both stories they were just like and I think those stories are really really important especially to instill in kids to look at both sides and you can look at it from a fictional perspective sometimes because if it's based on real events, but it gives you that empathy and not he's right, she's right. It gives you, when you can look at both sides and really feel compassion for the other side, then it then it allows for those critical thinking skills. I really have to go though, because um, we're, we're ahead of you guys still because of the time change, oh, but it was yeah. such a lovely conversation today. Um, I'll look forward to speaking with you guys again soon. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, Amanda. Take care. Lovely seeing you. I know. But I think, yeah, Amanda you know, brought up a great point there. And this is what I always think about is, is values and things. And I was joking the other day talking to someone about old TV programs. You know, we used to see those vintage programs. And there's a, there's a TV program. It's It's got to be like 50 years old or something like that. Right, the vintage one. Eh? Sorry? Is it the vintage one? Eh? Yeah, it's a, it's a vintage TV show. It's the Waltons, right? 
Oh, and, yeah, I, I've seen my father-in-law watching it, yeah. Right, right, it's a really old thing. I think when I was, I saw the reruns of it when I was a little kid, I saw the reruns of it. And I was saying, what an important program it was, because it really, I don't, I believe it was fictional, but it was written on the life and the generations of a family. In, yeah. In, in, and, you know, going through the hills. And what it really talks about is humans, life, love, the real values of what really goes on and distractions that pull us away from the important things in life. And I said, it's probably one of the most important programs ever been on TV. And people don't realize it, it, it taught us so much about, and it shows us our own immaturity at times and the real values of what really matter. And it, you know, it was all written in that. It was all in there. If only you choose to look at it and take the lessons from it, it was all there. It was all there. You see people's personalities, their egos, their fears, and the compassion you can have. And as Amanda said, you know, when it comes to war, I, I watch lots of business documentaries, art documentaries, war documentaries, economic documentaries, and I see the common threads in all of them. And throughout generations, people have believed the rhetoric. They've gone to war believing that their side is right. And one that always, always, always stuck in my mind was this guy who was in World War II, a British soldier, and he was a very religious man, very, very religious man. And he went there to fight because it was religiously correct to fight this war against evil. And when he got there, the first um, German soldier he saw, from the opposite side, he saw him, he said, and I was stunned when I saw him because he didn't wear his standard military belt. He had his military belt, but he had a different buckle on it. And it was a religious buckle, the same religion as him. And that German soldier thought that he was fighting for the religious right reasons too. And he's like, we can't both be right. This is so, so, you know, everybody was believing and, and their rhetoric but from the politicians, from propaganda, which science had, and of course, you layer on subconsciously, we will layer on other beliefs, we will pattern match. And that always stopped me dead in my tracks, as the person telling the story said that that stopped him dead in his tracks. And he had to question everything at that moment. And uh, um, yeah, and, and lots of people do. And as they mature, and I, I see lots of these combatants um, later in life, especially in aviation, because I'm nuts about aviation. Some of them, when they traced the records, actually were in the same battle and attacked each other. When they traced the records, it was this plane and that plane. And some of them are still alive and meet the person and say, oh, my God, you know, and they meet their families and get on well with them and find that they're very, very similar people. They were just, as they jokingly say, they just work for the opposite firm, the opposite company. And, you know, but as you get older, you mature and you learn. A lot of them campaign. Even though they were decorated heroes for what they did at the time for their country, they recognised later that that's not the way we should be living. It's not the way we should be interacting. And they campaign for peace. So, um, yeah, that's it always seems to be the human spirit, the human interaction that reigns supreme. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, you, you're right. And Amanda is right. We have to look at things on both sides and try to evaluate yourself things instead of uh, uh, even like this uh, AI, just try to evaluate yourself and just do some research uh, with it and see how it can help you with the business as well, because uh, it does not look like it is, is here to, to go, it's here to stay. And uh, people are using it to actually to add value into their businesses, and uh, it takes the it takes it takes away time as well with some other things. It, it, it helps with time. There are some things like myself. If I go, I was to go and write, I do ask it to write, but then I have to write it in my own words as well. But if I was to ask somebody to ask to write one thousand words for my business, it will cost me. 2,000 words, it cost me about 600 pounds. Why not go to 
uh, artificial intelligence and ask it to write it, and then I just sit down and write it my own. So save me money. So I think he, he, we just have to take advantage of it. And uh, also there are some things, good things about it, although there is fear of people losing their jobs, but the world is changing. When this thing is, is being presented, that means there are opportunities out there that are going to be created. Although people are going to lose their jobs, the jobs will be created. And if 900 million jobs are going to be created and 800 million jobs goes, that means really people are still there where so we can still create more jobs. If people are going to bring up ideas. There's going to be ideas. Social media might change. Who knows? Right. That's yeah. Right. Social right. media might change. Who knows? Because uh, social media is dominated in businesses. It, it helps us a lot. So who knows? Things might change. You might get some better things or have this robot that is <laughs> built my own software. I have my own social media with the artificial intelligence. Who knows? So there, there's so many good things about it, Grant. Yeah. And, and there are. And, and, and I think, it, as I say, if you embrace it properly, it is. And this is what I'm helping a lot of clients do now is to work with AI. Yeah. And so how they can use it and also how to uniquely stand above it. So that's what I'm helping clients. So I'm, I always look ahead to the future and see how this is going to play out. And I, I, as I said, I did this with lockdown, and I think every one of my predictions has come true. And I think with AI, I'm probably on the same path. It will evolve, and it will change, so no one can know exactly where it's going to go because it doesn't know itself yet. Those possibilities have not yet been explored. But I believe I understand what differentiation is, how you can stand outside from the competition despite AI. And this is what I'm helping clients with now. So, um, yeah, if anybody out there wants to know more about that, feel free to contact me and um, and I can show you how I can work with you to do that. <laughs> because I think it's going to be very important. Very, yeah. Very important yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it, we have to take advantage of it. Um, we have to use it in a positive way and also go above and see the future. I I see a brighter future, but the banks are closing down, the high street are closing down. So I was saying to my daughter, she needs to think about because she wants she wants to be a banker. So I feel that she needs to think about her career and see how things play out. Uh, have a plan B because uh, I think things will change. I don't know if we have high street banks or she wants to go to Singapore, be one of the top bankers. So I don't know if that Singapore will be existing by then. So, well, yeah, I mean, the Singapore monetary exchange, I mean, that, then of course, you talk about cryptocurrency. Is yeah. Take over, is it going to replace it? And, you know, there's many great things about cryptocurrency. There's also some very negative things about it. Yeah. So um, because of it, it, the greatest success of it can be the very great challenges of it. And it's not just about control. It's about safety. It's about security. It's about economics to, to stabilize countries and security of them. Um, all of these things come into play. But also it's amazingly liberating. And they are fast. They, yeah. aren't, they, they aren't holding on to money and reinvesting it for you over weekend positions. You know, all, all these things happen. So like everything, there's there's a good reason you take a surgeon's scalpel. You can use it to heal. You can use it to wound. You know, it's, it's yeah. the, how, how the wielder operates it is, is the defining factor. And that will always be the human spirit, your morals, your ego, your fears. So it's always the war between the years. It's always going to be that. I'm, I'm excited to see how the future plays out and I'm I'm ready for the change if there's going to be some changes I'm ready I can't fear because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow so I, I'm just gonna I, I go on YouTube and save any video that has been created uh, uh, teaching about it uh, AI, AI. So I just go and save it, and just go and listen to it, and go to the software, and just see how it, anything to do with the business. I just go and listen, 
And there's some lots of useful information, actually, really, really good information that you can use uh, for your business. And uh, there's fear, of course, but what can we say? There's going to be fear everywhere, Grant. Do you have any words of encouragement to our, for our audience as well? Yes. Um, and yeah, maybe I should introduce myself as well. Yes, of- yes, please. Um, yeah, my, my name is Grant. It's Grant Morell, international speaker, coach, trainer, and international best-selling author. And over the past 20 years now, myself and an international team have helped thousands of entrepreneurs, companies, and organizations across 15-plus countries. We've helped them to increase their profits by up to 200% just in a matter of a few small months. By understanding the human, by working with them, and understanding their team, the systems, because everybody does have a team, and I'll show you about that later. Team, systems, mindset, and, of course, their beliefs, so that they can live a life of passion, purpose, and freedom, and develop that business and a lifestyle that can become a legacy for generations to come. And I think I mentioned just now the word human, and it is about the human, because the value that I find in people when I coach them It is about understanding who they are as a human. And quite often I get to understand that person better than they understood themselves. Once I understand that person, I feed it back to them. And that's where their true potential and power is. It's all inside of you. But most people don't know where they've hidden it. And that's my job. I get inside, find the beauty inside of people and bring it out and shine it to the world. And that's never going to be more needed than now with the advent of AI. So it's a good thing. It can allow you to help more people quicker, but you've still got to understand who you are so that you can put that personality on top of something that is information that anyone can get. And that's how you'll stand out from the crowd and won't have masses of competition. So it's about working on yourself, and that's what I specialise in with people, working on yourself so that you can be unique in the marketplace and learn to appreciate yourself for your personal qualities when machines can do it emotionlessly. That's what I do, and I think the beauty is inside of you. And I, if I can help you bring that out, I'll be delighted to do so. That's my words of encouragement. Over to you, Nomsa. Am I? Thank you so much, Grant. And for me, my words of encouragement would be don't fear and uh, just give it a chance. Uh, see what you can do with it and uh, work with it as a human being and come up with some ideas and build companies or if you're working for a company uh, bring some ideas to the company you can use the AI to actually help you to bring up some ideas into the company and change things around and uh, no one knows the future I'm sure the future for our children it's going to be brighter, and uh, who knows? So we are here at Ngozi Talk Shows Monday to Friday, 1 p.m. UK time. And uh, please, uh, if you are following us on YouTube, subscribe to our channel and be part of the family. Uh, on LinkedIn, follow us, please. And uh, if you are following us on Facebook, please uh, like our page and give us some stars. And you can join the Gossip Talk Shows group and Unique Billionaire Mindset. We've got two groups at Gossip Talk Shows. So you can join those groups and be part of us. And if you want to uh, learn more about uh, the AI, please contact Grant. And uh, he, he, they, they are just, they're, they're busy uh, creating events about it. And uh, he knows more about it more than I. So you can contact him. If you can't get hold of him on uh, uh, social media, please go to my website, www.hscia.com and send me an email or give me a call, mobile or landline. God bless. Live with grace. Take care.